Welcome to Lane Creations Log Analysis Made Easy, where we try to make your ability to be a Splunk Cyber Ninja, a system administrator, however it goes, a lot easier. Today, we're going to talk about ITSI. This is going to be a multi-part video. <coughs> We'll be releasing pretty much uh, part of this each week. Uh, my premium members, they're going to be able, the members of this YouTube channel, they can watch uh, all my videos a month in advance, but uh, we'll be rolling these out one week at a time. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more of them before and uh, not waiting, go ahead and uh, click the member, uh, become a member down below. But the concept is, let's talk about ITSI. What is it? ITSI is a tool that is an application, a paid for application. You have to have, you have to pay for this in Splunk, but it'll allow you to create services. And services is the ability to more or less uh, take a common platform. Maybe that's your online business. Maybe that's a your HR platform. It might. Um, it could be your system administration, your networking tools, your, whatever the case may be, and that becomes a service. And you want to you classify that service and you try to see how healthy is the service. And the health of the service is direct dictated by KPIs or key performance indicators. They are indicators that say, for example, if you have an online, uh, online uh, transaction system, if your database is down or not performing well, it's going to be hard to be able to provide inventory and have your websites up to date. So that's going to affect your performance. If network bandwidth is down, um, if there's you're getting 400 errors on your websites, all of those would be KPIs. In and of themselves, some might take the entire service down. Some just might make the service less uh, uh, not run as smoothly as possible. And the concept of ITSI is to be able to identify your services and identify key performance indicators and put them together so that you can get a holistic view of the health of your environment. And we're going to walk through each of those in the upcoming weeks in my upcoming videos on ITSI. Uh, but in order to get this thing installed, Let's talk about that. First thing I did is I go to uh, ITSI Service Intelligence, and you can just look for Splunk IT Service Intelligence in Splunk Base. And if you have paid for it with a Splunk, you'll be able to download it. You can download a imitation form of ITSI, and it's called IT uh, IT Intel. Um, I can't remember what it's called right now. IT We'll discuss it another time. It's it's similar, but it does not give you nearly the capabilities that you get in Splunk uh, ITSI. I, I didn't. Mine's just brand new, so I haven't put anything in here. But this, like for example, here's their services. They have their database service, their online store, their middleware service, mobile service, web service, and external APIs, and then the health of each of those. And those are made up of. Their score comes from these KPIs, and each one of these KPIs has a score. So CP utilization plays a role. External API, middleware, uh, mobile service. Anyway, so each of these K each of these KPIs help contribute to the score of your service. They have glass tables, which demo give you the ability to create really cool visualizations to visualize. Maybe you have a knock or whatever you want to do to keep track of it. And as these, it will keep you keep track of any of the uh, the KPIs and the service and how they're doing. And they'll constantly keep updating. Gives you a nice visual presentation of your uh, service. And they also give the ability to create ticketing systems. So any time that the KPI, a key performance, fall, uh, falls out of a threshold level, it will create an alert. So if you're not monitoring your system 24-7, no big deal. You can come in the next day and it'll tell you anytime you have degradation of service. And if the service rest restored back to normal, um, you can also set uh, adaptive responses, as they're called. And that would be you can email yourself, send messages, send things to SOAR, have it take take actions when it sees a, uh, an alert. And last but not least, here is this deep dive. The concept is you can overlay your KPIs, your services, and you might be able to see common themes across them. For example, something happened right here at this 9 AM. All of these services started to have a rise or a drop. Definitely, the environment changed at that point. And so maybe you want to go look and see, as you're trying to investigate, why is the service not acting? What might have happened? Was there a patch rolled out? What what changed at this particular time that's made such an impact on all your other services? 
and this is the view I like. This is the very same sync service analyzer, and I can see all my interrelated services and subservices and how they relate to a grand total of a service. They provide great drill downs, and we'll go through each of those in detail as we go through the following weeks as we uh, give a quick overview of how to use ITSI. All right, so I've downloaded the app. And so I download it, I move it over to my box. So for example, here I have it listed. If I go, oops, yep, so there's my SPL doc, uh, little SPL file. It's not little, it's about 100 meg. And then I can come in here and I can actually, let's go back for a second. This go to splunk.com, go to documentation. I just went to install, and this is for a single instance. I'll briefly, briefly, briefly cover what you need for uh, more than a single instance. I just want to keep things simple. It's going to really cut down on some of the services and things I can do, but my job is not to make the most elegant. It, it, I want something short, simple, and easy to use that anyone can do and get the concept of how to use uh, ITSI. Anyway, so the pre, uh, installation prerequisites, you need to download from Splunk Base. Make sure you stop Splunk. Then you just tar that file into your uh, Splunk folder, Etsy apps. I did that, and once I do it, I restart Splunk, and you're good to go. The other thing you need to do is you need to make sure you have the required Java components. Uh, make sure that you're running, if you're running RHEL, that you use Java 1.8 or OpenJDK 8 or get the Oracle Java Jerry or JDK. Um, I went over here. I'm not going to go show all options of how to do uh, installation, but the concept was I just came in here and I go Java version. And I can see that I have a Java 1.8, so I'm good. But I didn't when I initially set this box up, and so in order to install it, I just ran sudo apt-get install open JDK 8 JDK, and that installed my uh, JDK library so that I'm I'm running the correct version. Anyway, so that gets me my Java up to date. I installed Splunk. I untarred that file just as it explains right here, and then Splunk is ready to go. Oh, I do need to make sure that I have my uh, open my bash RC file. I want to make sure I make these little minor changes. Again, this is right there in the instructions. And so, um, and so, yep, there are more things, predictive analytics, which require machine learning toolkit and the Python library. We'll cover that in another video when it's closer to more applicable. This, about this ITSI package, if I go into my apps, so if I do a listing of ops Splunk, Etsy apps. I'm going to see a whole bunch of these apps. These were all installed when I installed that little ITSI file. They're all needed on your on the machine, the search head that's going to become ITSI. That's the thing to remember. ITSI is an app and it goes on a search head. It should not be a search head that people are using on an everyday basis to do other types of work. Do not mix it with other premium products like enterprise security. You're just going to put this on a standalone search head. Um, in my case, it's the indexer and the search head are all the same thing. So it's incredibly easy to set up. But what if we want to set up Splunk on a, a bigger environment? Well, again, if you have indexers separate from your environment, you're going to have a search head that uh, you use just like you've always been using and set up a brand new search head and you're going to put ITSI on it. Just so you're aware, ITSI typically requires more resources than a general search head. Um, by default, 16 to 32 cores is what they really want with 16 to 32 up to 64 gig of RAM. It kind of depends on how many services and KPIs you're running. Just recognize that these KPIs are going to fire off every few seconds. And the more you have of those running, you're going to have cores just locked up. And so it's going to be, it's a resource intensive program. And so do not mix it with your everyday search head. And if you do, so if you go and you have that split environment where you have a, so let's say two search heads and an indexer. I was just on that folder where it says where to install IT service intelligence, which was the, I was here in this column, I just skipped to ahead to where to install IT service intelligence. And if you have search heads, you, it will tell you what you need to do. Indexers, you need to make sure you put that little SA index creation file there. You need to have, there will be indexes.conf. It's gonna add indexes to your Splunk instance. 
your search head's going to have them, but your index isn't, and you're going to end up getting errors saying this could not write to this index, missing index. If you copy these files over to your indexer, copy this app, restart your indexer, you're good to go. Um, but if you're using an indexer cluster, push it out with an index cluster. If you're using a standalone indexer, just push, uh, put it in the uh, apps directory. If you've got a license manager, make sure that you put the ITSI license checker and user access on there. If you don't, it won't grab the right uh, files and you'll have licensing issues. Big pain in the butt. Um, if you're using heavy forwarder, make sure to use SA index creation and put that on the heavy forwarders. It wants to know those indexers, uh, the indexes before uh, when you use a heavy forwarder. You don't have to do anything on universal forwarders. And again, the entire app goes on, on the search head. Oops, I did not mean to hit that install. Um, there are, you can do search head clusters and indexer clusters. I don't have one of those set up. Um, you can follow the instructions. It's relatively straightforward, but it's outside of the scope of what I'm gonna be able to cover. Anyway, uh, that is the basic concept of how to install Splunk uh, ITSI. And when you've got it all installed, if you made sure you have your license in place, if you don't have your license in place, it will not read IT service intelligence. It will read something else, IT environment or IT, I can't remember what it's called. I feel really dumb that I can't remember the free version of IT service intelligence. Um, it'll read as that. Once you have put the ITSI license in, you restart Splunk, This icon, the icon name will actually change. And that's how you can tell whether or not your license is setting uh, working. You'll know really quick when you jump in because you'll keep getting told this is a premium product, this is a premium product. You don't have access to this, you don't have access to that. Uh, but again, do not put much on this besides IT service intelligence. I'm going to put a few other things on here like the Python tool, uh, toolkit, machine learning toolkit, and I might have to put a few things so I can read my logs. But actually, in this case, I probably won't even need that. So um, yeah. That's basically it for ITSI and the introduction to it. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this leads you to be moving from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And just so you're aware, if you like this or other things that I've been putting on, check my YouTube channel. It's loaded with videos. At this given time, there's close to 160 videos available to everyone. I also have specialized training that I do sell at a very uh, on places like Udemy, but you can get access to it by being a member. Just join the member down below. You'll get access to my videos earlier, and you'll get access to training videos on how to be a system administrator, how to go hunt for bad in your network uh, and I'm just going to continue rolling those videos out and it helps support the channel and helps me be able to put stuff back in. I really want to be able to grow this but I need the infrastructure to be able to do it and your your contributions help. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, join my Discord channel. Uh, if you want to see something, uh, by all means, post in my Discord, post in the chat below, stuff you'd like to see and I'll see what I can do to make that happen. Anyway, take care and I hope you keep coming back for these videos.